Welcome back to Kenton and Habiba. Today we're gonna be cooking some Esca Beach fish. So I'm gonna be taking you all the way to Jamaica. Back to what I remember my grandmother's kitchen smelled like. Well, not really, actually. Most of the time she bought the Esca Beach fish from a friend of hers. So I'm gonna show you how to make authentic Jamaican Escovich fish. You're gonna love it. It's gonna be delicious just in time for Friday. So anyway, let's go into the kitchen because I wanted to cook outside. I really actually prefer to cook fish outside because I don't like the smell of fish in the house. But it was raining heavy and I'm afraid that as soon as I start frying this fish, this rain is gonna come down again. So I'm not gonna risk it. Let's go inside into the kitchen. Okay, come on, come on, let's go. We have some cooking to do. <laughs> Okay, so you know it's gonna be serious, serious <laughs> when I got the apron on. When I pull out that apron, you know we're gonna cook. So, husband got it, logoed on, Kenton and Habiba. I hope you are subscribed. If you haven't, what are you waiting for? <laughs> As I break into my Nigerian accent, I know it's kind of confusing. Is she Jamaican or is she Nigerian or is she American? All of it. I am all of it. <laughs> all of it. Nigerian, Jamaican, American, all into one. But trust me, I know what I'm doing. I know what it tastes like or what it should taste like. Watch and see. This is gonna be good. <laughs> First things first, I have here a big bag of gutted and scaled whole tilapia. I got this from the supermarket here in the US, here in North Carolina. And uh, they've done the work because it's already gutted and scaled, but I still have to wash it really well. I love the fact that each fish is individually vacuum sealed. So you see, came in a bag with all of the fish individually sealed, so that's nice. Okay, so after cleaning the fish, we're gonna go ahead and season it, okay? So we're gonna season it, and ideally you would season it the night before. So you would season it, um, put it in the refrigerator and get it the next day, or at best, if you can, or you didn't have time for that, just make sure you season it a few hours before you're gonna cook it. So I got my fish. This would make a cute thumbnail, wouldn't it? <laughs> put some um, cuts along the length of the fish because I want to make sure the seasoning seeps into the fish. Now that's this is optional. You don't have to put uh, cuts in it, but that's what I want to do. So let's see. We're just going to make about three slanted cuts in the fish. And just be very careful. And of course, make sure you wash your hands really well. You can see it. Now all the seasoning is going to go right in here and get absorbed into the fish. And these fish are quite large, quite large. So two people could probably eat one fish or a very hungry person <laughs> could eat one fish. So see, very simple. So when it comes to the seasoning initially, you're gonna keep it simple. So you can either use just plain salt, but I prefer to use this adobo, because to me, this is like a salt alternative. You're gonna make sure you get that all in there. You need your salt, like you saw, and then you're gonna need some black pepper. You can also have some thyme. Now, I could go outside and get fresh thyme from the garden, but it's a little muddy out there, so I'm just gonna use this. And again, get all into all the crevices, all the nooks and crannies. Make sure it gets all of this. You don't have to add thyme, you know, but I think thyme goes well with 
uh, fish. So I'm adding thyme in the beginning too. Okay, let's assume some time has passed. Okay, you've marinated your fish for several hours or at least overnight. We're gonna make sure we drain off any water. So you're gonna need some paper towel, uh, you know, put it on a flat surface and then put your fish on top of that to drain off. So I have these flat um, cutting boards. I think this is perfect. Or if you have a different um, surface that you can put it on, sure. Alrighty. So our fish has been marinating, but now we wanna make sure that it is, you know, drained, that you don't have too much water on it because obviously that'll make it very splashy on your in your hot oil. You see, you get this amount of water in there, which is a combination of like lemon juice or lime juice and the juices from the fish itself. So since we're not going outside with, you know, fire and a little grill, I'm gonna use this. This is something I've had for years. And what's nice about it is you can use it to warm food, but you can also use it to fry food because it's deep enough to fry something in it. If I can find something similar, I will link it in the description box. But again, I did buy this a while back. Comes with a nice big lid. And this plugs into the side. Okay, and then this plugs into an outlet. So I actually could use this outside because I have an outlet outside, but like I said, with it um, raining recently and on and off, I just don't want to chance it. I'm going to put it on the highest setting. It goes all the way up from warm to 200, 250, 300. We're going to go all the way to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, if you're not doing a lot of fish or you don't have one of these appliances, just feel free to use a regular frying pan. A regular frying pan would be perfect on your stove. All right, we had to take out the big guns. <laughs> and this is just regular oil. Okay, so we're gonna give that a few minutes to get really hot. Another way to make sure there's, you know, minimum water on it or liquid is to pat it dry with a paper towel, you know. Just pat it, pat it so that all the liquid is absorbed out. So while I'm waiting on the oil to get hot, let me go ahead and assemble all the things I'm gonna need for the pickled vegetables. So we're definitely gonna need some onions. Onions, just regular onions. Okay, our oil is hot, 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 hot. So very carefully, let's put our fish in. We're gonna put it away from us, okay? Away from us. And you see, and we're gonna alternate. fish are quite big so I'll only be able to put three in. So the thing about frying fish is that you have to be patient. Don't touch it. Don't try to stare it or don't try to lift it up. Just leave it alone. Give it at least five minutes on each side and uh, when you can lift the fish easily without it sticking then you know it's good to be turned. All right, so let me show you what you're gonna need for the pickled vegetables. So we have our onion. I said I'm gonna use two onions, two big onions for that amount of fish. I'm gonna use a red bell pepper or at least half and then half a yellow bell pepper. You just want that contrast. And so majority of it should be onions, but it's nice to have a little bit of contrast. A lot of times people will also add carrots or julienne their carrots too, but I don't have any carrots today, so this is going to be enough. Um, and then of course you need your scotch bonnet peppers, which you know no African household or Caribbean household doesn't use them. We all use them. 
So I'm going to use about four peppers. I'm going to take out the seeds because I don't want it to be too hot. I really mostly want flavor more than I want the heat. Of course, I like a little bit of heat, but I don't want it too hot. Okay. And then I'm also going to need some sugar. This is brown sugar. This is about a quarter cup of brown sugar. Um, we're going to need some apple cider vinegar. So I'm just showing you some options here. This is just regular supermarket apple cider vinegar. Um, I also have this, which I prefer, the organic apple cider vinegar, raw unfiltered. But you don't have to do this. You can just do regular apple cider vinegar. And then another must ingredient, you have to have pimento. So you're going to need at least a teaspoon of this allspice. Now, if you don't have this, you can get all spice like this in a powdered form but honestly the whole berries are better it's better to have the full berries and I think I have another thing of pimento as you can see we go through it in this house so yeah I just went to my pantry and of course I have pimento how could I run out <laughs> my Jamaican card would be revoked if I didn't have pimento in this house while your fish is frying that's a good time to go ahead and get your vegetables together and you know what I just did by mistake I cut the onion in half honestly it's better when they're still in a ring form like don't cut them in half just slice them leave them whole that way you have some nice giant rings all right so I meant to say keep your onion whole because you want the slices um, you know to be nice giant rings and you want to keep the onions kind of chunky Be very careful so see this is perfect kind of julienne so to turn the fish over you can use one of these these giant like forks cooking or grilling forks or you can use your simple tongues Ooh, you can definitely see that one side is done. Got stuck a bit, a little bit. All right, for the scotch bonnet, you need to be very careful because you don't want this to get in your eyes at all. So in fact, I probably should be using gloves, but it's okay. I'm gonna be careful and I'm taking out all the seeds. Okay, so you want to get rid of the seeds unless you're the type that doesn't mind eating fire. <laughs> so and I'm just going to cut them in two because I don't want them to fall apart when I put them in the pan. I want you to be able to see it. That way you can pull it out if you don't want to eat it directly. Ooh, I can smell it. Ooh, I can smell it. Some serious pepper. So you're going to need one of these. This is like a cookie rack or a cookie sheet. So I'm just going to put it on here because I want to drain off the fish. So I'm going to put a few pieces of paper towel on here. So I think my fish is done. All right. Fish number two. Put that on here. Doesn't that look good already? Doesn't that look good already? All right, so what are you gonna eat the fish with? You gotta keep that in mind. You can't just eat fish with pickled vegetables alone. You're gonna need some sides. So you can eat it with bami. And I also have some green bananas or green plantain. So all of you that are always saying, you know, why don't you steam your bananas or steam your plantain? Okay, today I'm just going to steam it. I'm gonna eat it with uh, steam plantain and then also we have some corn I have several ears of corn here so fresh corn that I got uh, actually just yesterday Let's 
get the last fish. I think she's done. Drain off the oil as much as possible. Okay, now we can focus on the pickled vegetables that are gonna marinate with this fish. Cause again, you don't have escabeach fish just cause you have fried fish and pickled vegetables. They have to marry together for several hours. You have to marry the pickles with the fish for hours, okay? Then you get escabeach fish. So you can't just dunk it on top of the fish and say you got escabeach fish. It has to be marinated <laughs> for at least eight to 10 hours. If you don't have patience, maybe it, maybe five, maybe five. But traditionally, it's like eight to 10 hours, even more. I got my nice little pan on. All right, and then I'm just gonna add a few tablespoons of the fish oil, okay? So that oil that we fried the fish, it is quite okay to use it in here. All right, so I have my oil, it's hot. Let me turn down the fire a little bit. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of the pimento. And you know your oil is hot when you can put an onion and it sizzles. Let me turn that down a little bit. Gently add your seasoning. Now I don't want to overcook my vegetables because I like them a little crunchy with the vinegar. I love that sweet, tangy, crunchy vegetables. So don't do the vegetables for more than five minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna add half a cup of apple cider vinegar because I like that tangy flavor. I mean, you can add more. You know, you can add more if you want. It's yours. Ooh, if you could smell the pepper. To kick it up a notch, as they say, kick it up a notch. Really, just to make the flavor more complex, we're gonna add our brown sugar. I guess you could use white sugar if you want, but I think brown sugar might be better. So this is a quarter cup. So you're getting that sweet, tangy, peppery, Caribbean flavor. And again, you saute this for about five minutes, no more than five minutes. Okay, you got your pimentos. And this is what gives that escovich fish the flavor. Ooh, when I tell you that pepper, <clears throat> the fumes, <laughs> it is. It is fire, it is fire. Honey, I had to open up the door to get some air, my goodness. Those scotch bonnets, what? They are not joking, <laughs> they are not joking. Okay, to assemble our fish, I'm gonna use this nice cast iron, heavy cast iron uh, pot that I bought about a year ago. It comes in so handy during the holiday season, okay? And I'm gonna link it in the description box. You can find it. Um, and it was quite affo affordable from Amazon. All right, we're gonna bring this over here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some of this and you're gonna put it in the bottom of your pot or container. Get some of that juice. Now we're just gonna go ahead and put our fish. Our fish is very cooled. And I'm just putting it on here, on top. Okay. And then we're gonna add some more of the vegetables and the sauce on top of that. So you see what we're doing? It's all about layering it. So we added that layer. Let's go ahead and add another layer on top. Okay, now we top off the last layer. 
So all of this is gonna get into those nooks and crannies. Doesn't that look beautiful? Doesn't that look good? So, and you're thinking, all right, so that's escobite fish. No, I told you. This has to marinate for like eight to 10 hours. If it didn't marinate, you don't have escovitch fish. All right, and I'm not gonna waste it. Just pour it on. So what the grandmothers used to do is then they would take a plate and press it down and then cover it with a piece of cloth. Here, I'm just gonna cover it because this lid is heavy. So it's pretty much airtight. And you're done. Leave it alone. It's done, it's done, it's done. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed watching me cook the Escovitch fish. And yes, it has been several hours later and I'm gonna go in and enjoy it. You can tell it's seven hour, several hours later because look, mosquito bite me over here and over here because I was out earlier. So anyway, let's go inside and enjoy our fish because I hope you're going to make this at home as well. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this with your family because you love them and you love me. <laughs> Thank you for helping us achieve 25k and we're just going to keep growing So if you love family if you love home garden type videos and occasional hair videos sprinkled in <laughs> Then I suggest you come back, but first of all, let's go enjoy our Escovitch fish mm -mm. this if your nose is not running ah, you didn't do it right <laughs> mm. if your lipstick is not all over your face you didn't do it right mm. you guys <laughs>